Hello and welcome to the 20th video in this series, Programming HS Engine JavaScript. It's been a couple of days delay since I last had a video, I'm sorry about that. The reason is uh, I've had, in other parts of my life, a bit of a busy time recently and I'm not able quite as to get quite as frequently to the videos as possible, but I'll try next week certainly to get back to that. And the week after that's then two and a half weeks holiday, so there will be quite a big gap. So we're at the stage now, last video I think we did the um, is square attacked by a certain colour or certain side and now we're ready to move on to starting to look at move generation and I've added a file called movegen.js you can see on the left hand side here and I'm just going to go into index.html and I'm just going to add in the move generation as well below the board JS in this way so that we definitely include the JavaScript file in this way. Remember to put it in the JS folder. So move generation, before we get round to move generation we really need to talk uh, about the move itself. I'm going to go into devs.js and there's going to be no code in this video. I need to talk about what we actually need to do with a move and sh uh, write out for you some of the things. So with a, with a move, when we store a move, we, we have obviously the from square and we have the to square that we generate. But in chess, as you're probably familiar, if you're familiar with the rules, there are a few other things as well that we need to know about the move. So we need to know whether the move is an ampersand capture. We also might need, we'll also need to know, know when it comes to making a move on the board, whether we captured a piece or not. We'll also need to know what piece we promoted to if the move was a promotion move promoting a pawn. It would also be useful to know whether it's a pawn starting move, so it's where a pawn moves forward two squares from its start position. And it would also be good to know whether it's a castling move type as well. So we need to somehow store all of this information when we generate a move. Now the first thing that maybe comes to mind is to do something like creating a var move uh, and then um, having things like the move dot from and move dot to and move dot captured, etc., etc., etc. But this is quite an inefficient way to do it. Well, in my opinion, anyway, quite an inefficient way to do it. I know that so far I haven't, and I won't in the whole project, put any concentration whatsoever on efficiency or performance because it's a, a tutorial just to explain how things were done. But regarding the move, there really, it really is. Um, it seems like overkill to have to use some kind of structure like this to set up the move. So we're going to set it up in a, a slightly different way, bearing in mind this information. And we're going to setting up using just one integer, where we've got, as assigned integer, 31 bits available, and we're going to align each of these bits of information according to the bits. So if I just take first of all the from square. Now, if you're not familiar with binary and hexadecimal, I'd suggest going away and maybe having a quick look at it, but I'll just ha have a quick explanation here. If we look at this number, we'll say that the least significant bit is the one on the right hand side. So if we had the number one, it would look like this represented in binary here. And then if we had the number 15, it would look like this represented in binary. And if we had the number, just to labour the point, and I'm sorry if this is absolutely crystal clear already for you, we had the number 16, it would look like this in binary. Now, if we had the number 255, it would look like this in binary, because remember that each of the bits here is worth 1, the next one worth 2, the next one worth 4, the next one worth 8, and so on. At least I think that's 255. And... The way that's represented though in hexadecimal, and this is why hexadecimal is so convenient, is this would be represent uh, each each number in a hexadecimal represents a block of four bits. And when all the bits are filled in this way, it's an F, which is a 15. If we just had an 8 here, like this, then this number here, whatever it is in decimal, will be represented in hexadecimal by F8 in this way. I'll just remove these so that's a bit clear. And hexadecimal essentially counts up from 1 to F, which is like a 1 to 15. And the useful thing with hexadecimal is you can look at the number, a number in hexadecimal, and straight away know what the bit settings are in a number. 
So, for example, if we had in hexadecimal something like an F, C, and a 7 in this way, then we'd know, first of all, that we've got three blocks of 4, like this. We'd know that the first block is a 7, which is a 1, 2, 3. And then a C is a 12, which is then a 1, uh, uh, yes, an 8, a 4, and a 0, 0. So a 1, 1, 0, 0. And the last one is an F, which is a 1, 1, 1, 1. So in binary, the FC7 would look like this. And that's where hexadecimal really comes in useful, because of course I don't know what number this would be in here in, in decimal, but it would be, you know, a few million or something like that, but you wouldn't be able to tell from the number in decimal which bits are on and which bits are off, or which bits are one and which bits are zero. And it's this kind of numbering that enables us to store all of our information inside one move, and I hope that explanation was in some way clear. To be honest, the assumption is you're already slightly familiar with, with binary and bits. If not, post a comment and I'll do a separate tutorial discussing just that, but there are plenty of them out there on the web. Um, and like I said, if you're not clear, then just let me know. So what we have to think about, our squares, as we know, can range from 21 up to 98. And when we look at that in terms of bits, we have, there's a bit, uh, we have up to 15 here, the next bit up is, a, uh, is the bit representing 16, the next one's 32, the next one's a 64, the next one's a 128. So we know we can cover all of our range of moves with, within 7 bits like this. So bearing that in mind, if we start setting up our move structure, first of all looking at the from square, if, you're not, if in a load of bits, or let's say we've got 28 bits we're looking at for our move, we'll take the first seven bits to store our from square. And what that means is, is say we have a move that looks like, I don't know, it's got some other bits set for some other reasons, so we've got something like a 1-1 one, one here and a zero one zero here, and these are all 1-1-1. One, one, one. This is just other information here. But say we wanted to just get the from square out of this move here, we would just take this move and we would, and say this is stored in variable d. And to get the from square, we would say that the from square equals d and 0 by 7f. Because we know that we only need the first seven bits for our from square. And we know in hexadecimal that our from square is represented, in this case, by a 7 and an f, because we can tell from the setup of the binary in this way. Well, representing a hex number is done with a naught and an x beforehand. So if we bitwise and our variable d with hexadecimal 7f, well, what are bits we're essentially bitwise anding with this, and assuming you're familiar with bit operations, the AND operation gives a 1 in the result wherever the both bits together are 1. So let's say our, our from square was looked like this. And our whole move variable was variable D here. Well, if we want just the from square from variable D, we would simply simply take, oops, sorry, I've uh, got that the wrong way around, sorry, our move is like this. That still needs to be 1, 1 and 1, 1, 1. So we would bitwise and variable D with this, which is the 0 by 0x7f. And the result of the and would then give us a 1, 0, 0 and a 1, 0, 1, 1. And all the rest of these bits here that were up here would have disappeared from the result. So it would just leave us purely then with our from square. And we're going to use this kind of method then to store the, all of the information in our move. So the way we're going to do that then, and I'll just start again below. I hope that's clear. Like I said, if it's not, then let me know and I'll post an a more detailed explanation. So we're going to store the from square like this and we do a bitwise and with this hexadecimal 7f. The 2 square, though, we also take up 7 bits. But when we store that, we're actually going to shift that to the left to 7 bit, 
7 bits like this. So 2 will be shifted left by 7 bits. And that means then that when we want to get the 2 square, what we'll do is, is we'll take our move, shift all of the bits 7 to the right, and then we can bitwise and with 7f again, like this. I'm sure you get the idea of what's going to happen now. For the captured, well, we know that our pieces go up to 12 for the Black King. So in terms of bits, we, we, the first four bits already give us, because that goes up to 15, give us coverage. So we'll then store the captured here. And we've now shifted 14 bits along. So to get the captured, I'll put that back now to show what we need to get for two. To get the captured, we need to shift back to the right 14 bits, so they would all end up here. And then we need to unmask that with just an F, because it's just covering the first four bits. The ampersand is simply one bit, covered by a, was this an ampersand move, yes or no? So we'll put that bit here. And now we don't need to do any shifting to get the information out. We can simply and this with this here, because the hexadecimal, obviously, of this, this bit here in these four here represents the number four. So the hexadecimal for this would be four, zero, 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 zero. So if we and the move with four, zero, 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 zero hexadecimal, and the result is not zero, then we know the move was an ampersand move. The same thing is done for the pawn start move. It's just the next bit along, and we shift and we and, sorry, then with an 8, because this here is now an 8 instead of a 4. The piece we promote to, again, like the captured, will be anything up to 4 bits. So we'll put those 4 bits here, which means when we want to get the piece out, we shift now to the right by 20 bits, because we've got 5 blocks of empty bits here. And then we can and that with F. Remember, that's the all of the bits set on the block. And last but not least, we have the castling which is a yes or no, so just one bit. And that goes all the way on the end here. And to ask if the move was a castling move, we simply bitwise and with this. So hopefully that was a clear explanation of how we're going to set up our move structure in the, in the program. And in the next video, we'll start writing some little functions that allow, to, allow us to get this information and store this information. And as I said, if that didn't make any sense, or I went through it too quickly, because I've made the assumption that you're pretty familiar with hexadecimal bits and bitwise operations, either look them up the tutorial or put a comment and I'll do a separate tutorial video on doing these operations. I've already done a couple in the C, beginning C programming series, and it's exactly the same principle in JavaScript and C, so you could also go and look at those videos. I've done an explanation showing switches going on and off. So thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcomes always on YouTube.